question of knowledge production is very much about which type of knowledge I would say is considered to be relevant um, mm -hmm. and in what particular context. For instance, in Mali right now, one could focus on what is considered to be terrorism, uh, the issue of jihadi or terrorist violence, and to focus or bring up that particular knowledge or explanation about the conflict obviously has consequences for uh, the actions or the, the agendas or the programs are being put forward, right? It, it, it essentially tells you that the solution is, if not totally at the very least, in large part military. If you focus on root causes, uh, mm -hmm. underdevelopment or lack of state governance or capacity or social injustice here and there or uh, ethnic conflicts and that sort of thing, uh, you obviously come up with a different program of action. So in that sense, knowledge is also about who decides which knowledge is relevant or which knowledge has priority or which type of knowledge has priority. Usually in my own work, what I try to do is to look at uh, what has been produced so far. I mean, there are two parts. Mm -hmm. One is what we know and how people actually work within that sort of sphere, if you will, of what we actually know. And the other part is what you don't really know and you do the empirical work, you go there, you go into the country or you go and do interviews and you collect data, in other words, to, to, to see if you actually know what's going on, right? Um, but I approach the two as overlapping and I try usually to see how people debate certain things, how they frame the issues, how they frame uh, the interest or the stakes of a particular conflict and so on and so forth in order to see what kind of particular limits or boundaries are being established. And by doing so, I can then focus on those boundaries and limits and see what that actually means for the conflict, for the solution uh, that one can bring up for the conflict. For instance, again, to go back to the issue of terrorism in Mali, for instance, well, that brings up a very particular limit to both the solution and the explanations that are deemed legitimate or prior being or should be prioritized relating to that conflict, you establish a line between legitimate and non-legitimate actors. Well, what happens on that line is where usually violence is being deployed or justified uh, uh, in the name of destroying the terrorists. But when you go on the ground, when you look at who's a terrorist, when you ask the question, well, who are they, for instance, that's where it becomes extremely complicated. Uh, that's, this is where Paul Godot should actually or the political stakes, I guess, appear uh, as a scholar and where the, the stakes of or the important significance of the question becomes uh, apparent. Uh, you, you see where people actually make claims or, 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 or make uh, a point of drawing a line between people you can talk to and people you cannot talk to, for instance, people you can uh, work with, people you cannot work with that sort of thing. But that decision is inherently political. There's nothing natural about these lines. It's always a political decision. Uh, it's always a political uh, issue. It's always a political negotiation, a struggle at times, right? So this is usually how I approach things. I look at how things are framed, how knowledge is framed, and the sort of particular limits that knowledge establishes. Uh, and so in that sense, looking at how those limits and boundaries borders are being established is my way of politicizing what I usually, usually uh, portrayed as non-political concepts or categories or types of conflict and so on and so forth. That's always a yes or no answer for me. Um, it's unavoidable that you, you, I have to deal with the policy world because that's my subject of study. Uh, 
these are the people that I need to talk to to get access to information, uh, to know what they're up to, what they're doing. So when you deal with actors, political actors, well, you need access. So, so you definitely have to engage with uh, the policy world at that very basic level. To get access means at times to speak their language or uh, translate what you're trying to do into something that might or might not be relevant to what they're doing. I'm not particularly um, concerned with trying to do what is called as policy relevant research uh, because I don't think as a scholar I work for the policy world per se. Uh, having said that, I understand the limits of what I do. I think I do anyway, uh, in that uh, uh, what I, I write will be interpreted in such and such ways that I might not actually have no control over. So in other words, my work can be interpreted as policy relevant or policy irrelevant depending on the issue and what I'm trying to write. So I'm not particularly concerned in that sense. I'm not trying to just say I'm working for this or that particular governmental or international organization actor or whatnot. I'm, I'm concerned about doing the best I can as an analyst, as a scholar. Uh, to point to and raise the political issues that I think are at stake that are most important in that particular, particular context or part on that particular issue. And then people do whatever they want with it. So in other words, I'm trying really hard not to sell my soul, I, as, I, as I put it or consider it when I think about it, um, so that my research is not uh, undermined or, or, or corrupted by other people's agenda. But obviously, you know, in reality, it's always hard. It's always, you know, consciously how am I being influenced or not by the people I talk to. I mean, I don't know, to be quite honest. I go back to my uh, work. I, I, I try to be rigorous as a scientist and so on and so forth in order to uh, make sure that what I do is not partially influenced in one way or another, but I'm also not naive. I know that all of our work is influenced uh, by our own, you know, subjective uh, position in the world. And I know as an academic, as someone who needs to find funding, for instance, and so on and so forth, yeah, probably sometimes my work is being influenced by, uh, by such things. But uh, uh, in the end, like I said, I'm trying to avoid that sort of conflict of interest uh, as, uh, as much as I can.